the CF Trusts have asked me to do another short video to go over some of the clinical questions that have been coming through. Um, they've asked me to keep to the point, uh, so sorry if I'm a bit rambly, uh, I'll try and try not to be rambling. Um, and I just wanted to say uh, before I start answering the specific questions that, that I have that, um, that um, it's, it's important that we have a clear characterization of the impact of this COVID infection, this infection with this coronavirus on people with cystic fibrosis. We, we, we are collecting data um, across Europe with our colleagues across Europe, uh, but we, we don't have a clear picture yet. Um, the Cystic Fibrosis Trust, the registry team at the Cystic Fibrosis Trust have set up an excellent framework for collecting uh, data on people with cystic fibrosis in the UK who, are, who have had a positive uh, test for the COVID infection. Um, and, I, and, and the CF teams across the country have really engaged well in that process. Uh, but but it, if you happen to be in that situation, if you could sort of encourage your CF team to be engaged with, with the process, it's a very straightforward process and it's worked very well. Um, and w at the moment, what that survey is telling us is um, that we have not had many people with cystic fibrosis in the UK who have tested positive for, for, COVID vi for the COVID infection. Um, and, and, and that's good news. Um, and we feel it's a reflection of how well people with cystic fibrosis and their families have embraced the re reduction in their social contacts. And, and, and I think that's been a tremendous effort by everybody. We can't be complacent, any of us, CF healthcare professionals or, 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 or you guys on the front line. We have to continue to, to, to work hard to avoid the COVID infection in people with cystic fibrosis and, the, and their families. And, and one of the questions that, that I have, ha, that, that we have uh, pertains to that. Uh, so I'll start with the questions. Uh, so Sharon, um, and I'm sorry, I don't know where any of these people are, um, but Sharon asks, um, uh, my husband is a key worker. Um, how can we keep our daughter safe if he's working outside and gets unwell? This is a, a really common theme that's coming through and it pertains, you know, not just to parents of children with CF, but also uh, adults with cystic fibrosis who are living in a sort of community and, uh, and there might be a family or, or, or with friends and, and some of those members maybe uh, have uh, key worker roles and, and those key worker roles are, are wide ranging. It was it was uh, it was lovely last week when everybody applauded uh, applauded the NHS staff, but it's somewhat embarrassing because we feel that you know everybody's making a contribution. The lorry drivers, the uh, van drivers, shop workers, and oh, and all the other key workers. I mean, it's been an exceptional effort. So I mean, if you are a key worker, and the question's asking about when you become unwell, I I, I think. So you, obviously you have a family who's shielding uh, a, a, a child and, and that means that th that child is restricted to, 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 to not be able to go out, uh, it being cared for by the other parent. Um, and when that parent who's a key worker comes into the house, they should remain uh, social distancing from other members of the family. That's extremely difficult obviously um, and they should take all the pre pre precautions that, that, that have been outlined very clearly and certainly NHS staff are very uh, diligent about this so talking to colleagues at work you know when you get home you wash your hands you don't touch door handles or anything like that you take your, your uh, you wash your hands you take your work clothes off you put them in a basket to be washed at a high temperature later on you wash your hands again you get in the shower you clean down you wash your hands again get dressed and then you're in your home clothes but even then you, you you really should be keeping social distancing from the other members of the household which is really difficult and I think probably a mindset a good mindset to have is you are always potentially infected with the virus and that's a difficult psychologically but but it's the safest way because we know that when you become infected with the virus you will not have any symptoms for one two possibly even more days 
and, and in those one or two days before you develop symptoms of a runny nose or a cough, those the virus is shedding then, and th those are the days where you are, you are most uh, contagious. So that means that you can spread the virus uh, to other people. And, 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 and so having an attitude that um, I am potentially infected is, is good. I, I, it, psychologically, it's difficult, but, but it's the best way to be prepared to do all those arduous uh, tasks that you need to do when you get home and to, and to, to maintain the social distancing. If you become unwell, then you're no longer going to be able to go into uh, work. And, 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 and again, uh, so that raises all sorts of issues around the house. And, and you should maintain the social distancing at home uh, even more rigorously, if anything, sleep in a separate bedroom, try and uh, eat separately. But everybody appreciates that the, the reality of achieving this is, is really very difficult. And some families have spoken to me and, and, and described the really difficult choice of, of, of a family member moving out of a house into another house to, 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 to um, uh, protect uh, a child with cystic fibrosis or a, an older person with cystic fibrosis. So difficult times, but we're inspired by many of the messages that are coming through and you might have seen them on the CF Trust website about how families and people with CF are using all sorts of innovative ideas and things to, uh, to, to cope with this really horrible period of time. Next question, uh, Carrie asks, are CF clinics being swapped over for coronavirus patients? And if so, what happens to people with CF? Well, all elective clinics, not just in cystic fibrosis, but all elective clinics are now uh, cancelled. And, and that's on the basis that we're, we're trying to avoid people coming to hospital unnecessarily. I mean, um, we're trying to avoid people going out at all. Um, so it is an issue because, I mean, we're having elective clinics for a reason. It's because we want to keep people well. But the balance of the risk and the benefit means that we're now cancelling those clinics. Now, we're, we're not cancelling those clinics so that we can bring people in with coronavirus to have clinics. The only people with COVID-19 infection that are in the hospital are, pe are people who are, who are poorly and, and may need support with their breathing, may need oxygen, and, and in some cases may need ventilatory support. So, so they're really quite the severe end of, of the COVID disease. Uh, the vast, vast majority of people with COVID infection are being managed at home, and, and, and that's absolutely right. So hospitals are in a very strange state. They're, very, they're, they're extremely busy, and, and in some cases, capacity is being really pushed, but that's because of the acute work we're doing. And, and so, but they're very quiet in other regards, because there's no clinics going on. And, and obviously we are changing the way we work because some people who work in the health service are becoming poorly and, and uh, are taking uh, time out to, 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 to make sure that they're not spreading any viruses. So, so there's all sorts of stresses on the health service, but, but there are not, we, we haven't stopped the elective CF clinics because of uh, uh, coronavirus clinics. We are now looking at how we communicate and keep in touch with our uh, patients and, and make sure that they don't feel isolated, that they've got good communication pathways. And all teams around the country are, are, are doing that. Next question is from Paul. Paul asks, is 30 minutes outdoor activity a day enough for an active child with CF? Um, so 30 minutes, 30 minutes is, is minimum. Is 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 they they the, the, as much exercise as they can do, but it's really difficult, and we appreciate that. But thirty minutes is the minimum. I mean, Joe Wicks. I don't know how long the Joe Wicks show goes on for. I can hear my neighbours doing it some mornings, but uh, it sounds v v very good. And maybe one day I'll do it. But um, but but a lot of children are embracing that kind of uh, regular activity, and I think that's really good for them. But but really, as much activity as possible, structured or unstructured. Um, one of the really difficult things about this current shielding is the restriction on going out and that is something that obviously we'll be observing as weeks and months go on and we'll be uh, seeing how, if that changes but at the moment it's really important that, that the children are as active as possible. There can't be too much activity. Obviously they need to sleep at some time during the day and do their homeschooling. So those are all the questions uh, for this week. Do send in your questions and we try and respond to them 
individually and, and, we, and, and, and we can mention them on regular podcasts. Um, and as I say, keep up the good work. It's, it's been a tremendous effort, effort by everybody.